but the amount of people that buried there, no one, no one would actually know, and it'd be awful hard to put a figure on it. But on record, there is 796 children that lost their lives here between 1925 and 1961, with no burial record of any of the children. In 1975, when he was just 12 years old, Freeney Hopkins and a playmate found a cache of bones in a field in Tomb, County Galway, in the west of Ireland, where a home for unwed mothers used to stand. 39 years later, that innocent discovery has morphed into a visceral story that created international screaming headlines suggesting that evil nuns had stuffed 800 dead babies into a septic tank. But the real story is much less sensational, much more complex. It gained traction only recently and led to the Irish government to launch an investigation after a local woman named Catherine Corliss could find no burial records for 796 children who died in the mothers and babies home and tomb between 1925 and 1961. As the centenary of the 1916 Easter Rising approaches and Ireland struggles to commemorate its revolutionary past, it is having even more difficulty reconciling how the most vulnerable and marginalized members of its society were treated in institutions run by Catholic religious orders in the first half century of its independence. I went to Tomb to get the story and started with the boy, now a man, who made the initial discovery 39 years ago. 1975, myself and my friend Barry were playing here and this used to be our general play area. And in the corner here was all overgrown. And just in the wall next to this plot of land, there used to be an apple orchard. And one day we came out of the orchard and jumped from the wall, landed on the ground, and underneath it was felt a hollow. And having brushed back the overgrown weeds and briars, we discovered a concrete slab. We prized up the slab and we found, I don't know, to our amazement or our horror, uh, an area full of bones and the best way of describing that would be a concrete chamber whether that was a crypt or a tomb or a tank we don't know but just, there appear to be a lot of bones in it maybe up to 10 skeletons at the time but even then it was apparent that there were that children babies or infant children a lot of the women that would have found themselves here would have been, you know, to be, would be classed as minors now, they'd be under the age of 18, 16, I think was the average age, and a lot of them would have been pregnant through no fault of their own, and that could be, you know, rape, incest, there seemed to be a lot of incest and rape going on at the time, you know, and it might have been the lack of sexual education, there was no such thing as contraceptives. A woman that would be a first time offender would spend one year after the trial of her birth, a woman who would be a second offender would spend three years after the time of the child, her birth, her child's birth. And I'm screaming, an offender. They were sentenced to a year and three years respectively, as if they had committed an offence. And to me, they didn't commit any offence. You know, getting pregnant is not an offence. Getting pregnant is not a sin. And, but they were treated that way. What I hope comes of all this, and what a lot of people hope comes of it, is the recognition that these children did lose their lives here and that they were recognised. And I would hope that we as a society would learn from this that, you know, everyone deserves recognition, not alone in life but in death as well.